phone. Not once do I say, how are you faring, mom? I know you are afraid of being alone in the dark. No false assurance here. No promise of a call. I see her smile. Fingers knotted into a pile and her feet searching for a cloud that had once been her real confidant. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rajiv Kandelwal, you may read your first poem now. Okay. Uh, the poem that I am going to read is titled Union. Can you hear me all? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Okay, sir. thank you very much. We were having coffee in a crowded shopping complex, surrounded by bustling, hustling window shoppers, where excited, restless kids were pulling, pushing distracted parents. But for us, the pandemonium around felt sound free, as silent as our shadows, as we were totally engrossed in each other. In our private worlds, where the shared silence was overpoweringly magical, pleasurable. Eyes locked, I slowly stretched my left hand inch by inch across the table towards her and left it midway, coaxing the fingers to lay idle. Millimeter by millimeter, her hand advanced with snail speed and eventually firmly entwined with my fingers. Seconds stood still. In that self-contained moment, no one spoke. Nothing needed to be said, but the surrounding mood felt comforted, connected, contented. The hot coffee, untasted as yet, gradually turned tepid. But who cares? As all attention, unheeding the urges in mind, ignoring the hundreds of the body is directed, focused towards the interlocked fingers interlaced in stillness. The quietude, as happy as the successful thief, is alight with joy, its smile contagious. It's early for words, for silence shares space, bonds, Soothes, wordlessly conveys love. Love is in the air. Thank you very much. Mr. Inam. Okay. So maybe some technical glitch at his end. Uh, in the meanwhile, Professor Dhanunia, you can go ahead with your second poem. The title of this poem is What You Will. I know of a day that shed its light, craving for the dark to hold the sepia autumn grief of a worn out leaf that had once been green. I know of a son that walked away when the tears of a sparrow crossed its worm-like hunger and licked its heat as if dying without water was a curse. I know of a storm that changed its course as it hurled itself in the arms of a sea, bereft with bodies that had once been brown with muscles bare. I know of a woman who lapped all sorrows and kiss them safe behind rimmed glasses, hurt and betrayal, impotent to seize the laughter of her youth. I know of a man who loved her truly, but bowed to the winds that held her fragrance 
and whisked him away to another. I know of a child declared dumb with phrase who turned every word into an epic and every smile that stretched a million moons. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Inam has joined again. So Mr. Inam, you can read your first poem. <coughs> Please unmute yourself. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, the first poem is titled uh, Amorino Breathing. The table is ink, serviates, O lyrical gymnast. The barmaid is queen moon, sharks observed from quarter light. The majorate sweating dream, Amorino breathing tattoos. Floating head in Zenon lamp, trust arch night and Andromeda. In a corridor, a muse erupts. A stylus of solid perfume paints a tavern. Triacus and Pentacrinus loving so much. Thank you. Mr. Vajju, your second poem. <laughs> this poem is titled Color Me. Sorry? This poem is titled Color Me. Okay. I was lying at the beach looking at the open skies when your thoughts tiptoed in. I see you coming out of the sea with that slightly slept in look. The t-shirt buttons loaded, strained, begging to shoot off, give me a pandering look. Inky black shoulder length hair falling over sleekly sexy eyes alluringly allows two strands to sensually caress cheeks with one pushing the other towards thrust out lips with that just kissed off look. You look sultry, sophisticated, with a marble intensity, strong, poetic, so very soft. The vision hauntingly real has a painterly feeling that colors me. And I, lying at the beach, looking at the open skies, close my eyes for some fun. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Yunam, you can read your second poem so that we can go back to the cycle. Uh, this is titled, this is titled, uh, Enamorato travels through the seasons and thunderstorms. Writing a love poem is like building a home or a palace, brick by brick, stone by stone, metal by metal, for someone who may not live there. Leaves fly, the cat is on whiskey, bleeding feet of an autumnal dawn. Her body is a sulfur prison. She watches the war on the television and dreamt of a large lioness with luminous periwinkle nerves last winter. After the numberless odysseys and silence, they who have departed now fly with angels. I uttered a few words. Too late for the tavern, never too late to drink of your mysterious spirit. Love is rain on leaves, hypnotic river, flowering the cordial curves of that familiar body and an ecstatic turtle, liquiform, flute song, a mystic conflagration <laughs> and time's hieroglyphic jugglery. Desires hot dust. You weren't scared 
you even remark upon the several tints of the sun at apocalypse earth of wolves earth of sheep astral cattle may glory be thank you uh, professor ranu your third poem the title of this poem is for you virginia sunsets have piercing tales of long walks and parched necks of folded hands and summer hostility growing in a season of blunt ears i marvel at the serenity of gomti the river tickles with the sorrows of the one who jumped one afternoon a stranger who comes to life only in dreams scrawling on sands his unfailing sadness to bear the hatred of this universe impetuous like a granite he reserved happiness for another life they said he was a man with little courage and could not wait for the tide to subside he clenched his feet and was down with a thud yes it was the earth and not the river that took him in they found his pockets were empty and there were no seashells in his eyes thank you uh, professor rajiv yes sir <clears throat> this poem is titled this, this weight is killing the funny thing that happened was my expectation of death's arrival in the invisible form of corona and thus stopped all handshakes and feet touches from coming the padlocks on the entry door lived a lonely life for months dying to hear its doorbell death kept on ringing in the next door house hope was hoping that as day had broken the code corona was bound to pay them a visit but now the stiff uncreaked unslammed door and i waited and waited like farmers praying for rains in arid lands but nothing happened my arthritic knees that had stood for hours cooking joint family meals and my cracking raw skin hands that had rubbed greasy utensils over this weight wore an accusing look whenever the maid entered or exited the vicinity dwellings saying you got to be kidding i implore oh corona visit our vicinity this weight is killing thank you you know yes thank you sir thank you i said thank you please unmute yourself sorry yes you ink your face with halogen a balloon writes elegies a poem cannot wait autumn ignites stars we touch in ether and speak in okean a violet cat offers bread we enter the street's love story all the uh, first uh, these three poems are very up close I mean not that uh, of course uh, the previous poem of inam was very existentialistic not only because of certain phrases and sounds but even otherwise even what professor unial read um, including uh, what uh, mr rajiv kandelwal read as uh, corona uh, they are all very heavy and close Uh, but by the way what is mystic spirit um you know <clears throat> i mean i mean sorry i mean yeah <laughs> mystic spirit all spirit is mystic 
Uh, well, uh, uh, if you'd like to, uh, uh, it it does it, it does uh, refer to uh, uh, a mysticism of the of the soul. But of course, uh, uh, it, it, when you do read the poem, perhaps there is a there is a pun. You know the 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 wine of mysticism, which is which is a metaphorical wine of wisdom, and certainly it could also mean uh, literally uh, literally in the sense of wine because uh, sometimes in in mystics uh, mysticism uh, in in spiritual literature you you find the 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 mention of both uh, literal wine and of course the the spiritual wine of wisdom okay okay in a very conventional uh, way okay uh, yeah. professor ron Please go ahead, Professor Ramu. Please unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself. The title of this poem, I yeah. have. Yeah, the title of this poem is "Love Letter from a City, Lucknow to Mumbai, for all artists in exile." Often the words smack of dry dust, ochre robes. patent greed often the knife cuts swarf silk slices of melon a tongue often the pen becomes her enemy unmerciful and crude a reckless tool often the book remains unread hiding tales perhaps tomorrow often the colors swallow the map spinning contours invisible address often the song shelters the storm clutching children after the floods often the tears disagree with the night to let loose captive loneliness often the answers set a prelude to uneasy questions shredding wisdom often the brush traces a legend deconstruct death in exile thank you okay. death in exile wow it looks like uh, not from lucknow to bombay it looked like uh, from from russia with love <laughs> yeah and now mr rajiv kandelwal yes sir i'm another reading my poem this is titled my first memory of you my first memory starts with the party at your house in the room with wall to wall carpet velvet upholstery toss up pillows braided drapes ancestral portrait over the carved table a tiered what not shelf and on its top a stack of books from the likes of John Keats, John Donne, Robert Burns, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, Carl Sandburg, Pablo Neruda, running to complete length in decorated focus, and I, flush with romantic slush, recall Lay Hunt's "Jenny Kissed Me" and Walter Savage's "Whoever." Feels like I, and in the midst of all chaos, you sitting unaffected, like Beatrice Potinari, and I standing like Dante in church. Thank you. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Dante in church. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now I think he started with the mystic spirit. Now it went like this, and I find the. Ended with Dante. Uh, Inam, your next poem. Please unmute yourself. Uh, yes, this uh, this poem is titled "A Gymnast Disrobes the Universe." Bipolar lovers, monkeys, the electric drunkards. Karna is alive. Flying tigress, you who are on a quest, brighten the cynical stars. Forget-me-nots blooming 
engines, and your mouth of water lilies, rabbits, and photons. In your vast mental landscape, what is the shape of morning? Nymph, share with me this rain, and your hidden ache, and your paintings from the others. A beast trying to be gentle is trying still. I am at the meeting point of sun and art. Odin is awakened and at bliss. The sky drowns you. You touch the airy dayness. Thank you. Professor uh, Brown. The title of this poem is In a City of Riots. Will you draw for me a neat house with as many rooms as nights of love? Will you gather in your arms my dissolving flesh and comfort me with a promise of return, even if I know it is our last night together? Will you bring me shards of energy from the main bazaar? Where will you go when the shutters are down after the weekend riots? Will you embrace me tight as you get a tossing glimpse of an enemy with toxic eyes? Will you erase my belief that the world is seeking not a saint but a rebel to set itself free from the scab of inequality? Will you scrub me clean with mud from the Dead Sea and the water from the Ganges? Perhaps in confession, I will join you and search for hands innocent before the crime. Will you defy the scriptures and devote a new tongue with Om, Amen and Allah inscribed in it as signifiers of one and the same light? Will you sing of everlasting joy, Satchit Ananda, when bereft of feeling, unattached and distant, I will betray all bones and smash your bristling trust with one stroke of a staggering lie? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Raju? Yes, sir. Uh, this poem is titled Wandering thoughts. As always, when I am alone and my thoughts wander, that's when I say in you, dear daughter, the reflections of bits and pieces of myself. And I fondly admit that you are my pride and joy. Your nature shines, a daughter beyond compare. You are stellar and rare, more than the sacks of money raked in by a beggar. As always, when I am alone and my thoughts roam aimlessly like a typical window shopper, that's when I perceive I love you very much, more than a politician's liking for corrupt public procurement posts. As always, when I'm lonely and sitting with your thoughts only, erratically, your thoughts vaporize as fast as over poured petrol in sweltering heat and that's when the different drifting musings bring in your mother as silently as the breaking section of the iceberg sliding into the sea and losing myself completely i discover i have never loved anyone as much as i love your mother and the thought popping into the mind says, these are not words that every husband 
tells his wife but it's quite like a blind person's yearning for eyesight thank you very much yeah thank you no you know in another age the blessed zamzam had sprung forth from the heels of ishmael to quench the thirst of mother and son today a migrant ishmael tries to awaken a dead hajer and even angels close their eyes before the treachery of human kind ghost tigers observe nature's sadomasochistic dance what have we done birds drift inside my cloud cranium i call your name among the desert music we meet in dreams in an unfamiliar past i kiss your forehead and we exchange moons of souvenirs for lonelier days uh yeah this this was uh, written during the days of the uh, the lockdown days so you might have obviously uh, got the references uh, here's hoping for for better days and and that the pandemic uh, departs no oh, pandemic will not depart it will be there <laughs> yeah yeah it will be there with us i mean it has not been like um, let's not go into that subject and uh, it it will always be there what happened to the spanish flu it's still there with us like yeah, that but yeah. only thing is it will no no it will not touch us hope let's hope let us it will not touch us all of us anyway so um, is it like uh, i think till i think mr kandewal got disconnected no problem so is it something like all these poems these all these um, poems which were read now till now say maybe 16 of them maybe 15 of them Uh, that all of them have this kind of uh, enormous uh, presence of the poet the acumen of the poet the uh, the yearning of the poet to express in different ways uh, his or her own observation observations but is it something apart from that is there any way i will start with you professor ranu then followed by inam is is there a poem where he did not poet was not there you were not there things automatically came it has nothing to do with outside or your own imagination professor ranu if you have any one please do read that poem okay feel a nice change uh, you mean to say that when you write are you consciously there in the poem and then uh, it comes out of your own imagination i think that there is a blend of the real and the imaginary but much of what you see if it disturbs you if it hurts you if it, if it uh, uh, you know when you get upset or even uh, i don't think that i write when i am happy i write when i am deeply deeply in a in a meditative state and um, deeply disturbed because that's mm. that's the that's the time when i uh, you know uh, uh, if i'm at unrest i am able to write and uh, most of the poems therefore that unrest may not necessarily be the unrest within actually what you see around you that also leads to some kind of an unrest or distress and then uh, you 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 come out with with words of angst anxiety concern so um i i don't see um how is it possible for me not to be there because i'm i no, i hear and exactly. i see and i feel yes i mean, yes. I mean uh, that is very given what you're saying yes. is i mean correct but uh, there are some times you know irrespective of us us words do flow in that's all i wanted to know anyway you can read one joyful poem okay one joyful poem right then yes. i'll just yes. read um this book means um this is a poem which is the title of it is in the company of women and uh, uh as women i think we relate to each other and um, despite the, you know the many experiences that we go through there is something which bonds us and which brings us close to each other so the title is in the company of women in the company okay 
I'm often asked, why is it that I prefer being in the company of women? Not all, but certain women I prefer. Let this be clear. For years, they have slogged to keep themselves warm and men happy. What so boils, corns and aches, they refuse to shudder. Sights and smells travel far. And with them, I have seen my own sadness tumble and dissolve into a mist of hope. I become perky and young. Forget my swollen thighs and cauterized uterus. A healthy camaraderie between us splits and warms me, warms me inside out, tucking in the fragrance of jasmine and basil. We become whole and lovely all at once. Between us, slabs of silence rip open prolonged secrets that were ashamed to be rinsed. We lean on each other's arms and often lend a tear or two. We make a pillow of shredded promises and laugh in sleep. No, we do not speak the same dialect, but we do share the calligraphy of the heart. However quiet, however crumbled, we learn to draw from dried up wells and hence we multiply our joys. Thank you. Thank you. That's wonderful. I mean, uh, despite the visible chasms, women are Purna Shakti, one which completes the other. Yeah, Inam? Uh, this poem is titled uh, Quietness. A summer rolls away towards violet wells. In the cafeteria of moonlight, a kyanite horse eavesdrops upon the rainy interludes. Blue roses in rain, I divine the extirpation of Gog and Magog. Rivers of light. Agbar's ice hockey twilight box. The light of fireflies wraps the earth at dusk. Ten flower villages, thimbles, Solomon's seals and cleaves, wild flowers and ghosts, the skin of a vanished heart. My tongue is protest's journal. Our huts being forests. Summer is asleep, leaf and silence. Muscadel nights, a symmetric lunar eagle. I walk with Muhammad and Musa. Leaves in wind, Isa brings to life the war martyred Russians, my valorous brothers. No sacrifice was in vain. Rising solar medals. Misty road, grey shine, lamps of heaven, infinite waking river, waking winter. Golden songbird, oceanic heavenly bisonry. Joseph of Copatino levitated chanted the virgin's name, the dance ecstatic, the blind eyes of Richard Church sang with light, the people and the city pulsating ornaments. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rajiv Kandelwa, one last poem from you. Mr. Rajiv? I think uh, there is some problem with him. So anyway, so it's, it's a really, uh, I think he's come back. Mr. Raji, one last poem from you. Okay, sir. Uh, this one is titled, Love is a lot of work. It is irrelevant that devouring medically prohibited chocolate pastry gave me intense pleasure. 
it is irrational not to find delight in the smile of the frolics of children it is pointless to try and learn what the coat button each label line said to a material that hbo beamed romantic comedies like runaway brides you have got mail sleepless in seattle and the likes all day long still of no consequence is the fact that the daily news channels spoke about politicians in sensitivity and slow to respond bureaucracy what is of time importance is why she did not communicate today thank you okay you got a mail <laughs> it started the program started with ma and it has got with the romanticism of your god mail okay so thank you very much i mean we, we we can go on and on such lovely set of poems all of you read but uh, sadly we have come to the close of our programs so thank you very much mr rajiv kandelwal thank you inam thank you professor ranu thank you, so thank you very thank much you, for sir. accepting our invite thank and you thank reading. you sir thank you fellow poets Yeah. thank you very and, uh, much for inviting us over it was okay. and also the hope we can have one more session later hmm? and those uh, who are watching this program live on youtube and facebook please do continue to watch all all of sahitya academy's programs in all the 